When it comes to the process of cross-cutting timber here in the workshop, there's generally two tools that I use for this. The first one being my miter saw. Now miter saws come in all shapes, forms and sizes and different types of capacities, but my specific miter saw is a very small miter saw and it only really has a cut capacity of around 100 millimeters. The second is here at the table saw and there are multiple ways just on the table saw alone that you might do a cross cut. One of the most common ways is to use something like this miter gauge which rides into the miter slot of your table saw and allows you to make repeatable cross cuts. For me, this expands my capacity. I can now cross cut up to about 200 millimeters. But what happens when I wanna cross cut something that's a bit wider than that? And that's where I'll turn to something like my cross cut sled. Now a cross cut sled is one of the most common and universally recommended jigs that you can make for your table saw. Just like a miter gauge, it utilizes the miter slots in your table saw to create a sled or a base that allows you to, again, make repeatable, safe and accurate crosscuts. Now my specific crosscut sled here will allow me a capacity of around 300 millimeters. And yes, one way that I could increase that is to either modify this or create or build a new crosscut sled that has much bigger capacity. And that's not something that I really wanna do. I think we've all seen those YouTube videos of these enormous giant crosscut sleds. And while I'm sure that they work really great, I think that once a jig becomes too big, too clunky or too awkward to use, then you're not gonna use it. So again, the question's the same. If I have something I wanna cross cut that won't fit in my cross cut sled, then what's the solution? So the solution that I've come up with is this sliding miter panel. It allows a much longer and deeper cross cut and allows me to do those cuts easily and safely. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this and maybe give you some insights into how you could make a similar accessory for your table saw. This sliding table saw accessory is going to be built on the left hand side of my table saw and it's going to span the length of the table which is about 675 millimeters long and it's going to be about 330 millimeters wide. It doesn't need to be super wide here, just wide enough that the rails I'll use will ensure that it's sturdy and regardless I don't really have a lot of space to play with here. To keep it simple and the costs down, I will of course be making this out of form pie. I was not expecting that. The cut you see I'm making here is a perfect example of the type of thing that I want this sliding panel to help with. Making this type of cut on the table saw, especially if the piece is quite wide, is difficult and depending on the width of the material can even be dangerous. A piece like this is way too big for any miter saw, it's way too big for my cross cut sled and of course not even possible with a miter gauge. With the basic frame cut out, I'm going to edge band the sides with, you guessed it, more form ply. Off camera, I planed the resin off some form ply strips and glued these to the side walls. While the glue sets, I want to think about how I'm going to attach this to the side of the table saw. Right, to be able to bolt this to the side of the table saw, there's already existing bolt holes here. so. I'm going to try and reuse those positions. I don't really want to drill into the table. We can drill into it, obviously, but it would be easier if we can use the existing one. So there's a couple here, here, in the middle, two down the end. Uh, and the easiest way to kind of map where they are is I've just got some masking tape. And what I'm going to do is uh, trim this to the size of this profile. Then I'll mark where the holes are, and then I will uh, align this to the side piece and it should mirror up hopefully. So that's what I'm going to do now. This tape method works well for all sorts of situations where you need to transfer the location of some existing holes. So with that done, we can head over to the drill press to drill them out.
put this frame together, I'm simply going to use some 45mm screws. While it won't be complicated to assemble, it's going to be very important that these two sides are exactly 90 degrees to the base and are set at the exact same height to meet the top of the table saw. A while back someone asked me why I keep using two drills, one for drilling and one for countersinking, rather than just using a single bit that has the countersink built into it. I suddenly remember why I don't use the one that I have anymore. At first I thought it was just my user error, perhaps trying to drill too fast, but that was until I realised that some of the hot wood fibres, when setting the drill down, had fallen onto a rag cloth sitting on the bench, and literally proceeded to burn a hole in it, nearly catching on fire. Alright, I'm going to stop using that drill bit. <laughs> I just nearly set the table on fire. <laughs> oh. <coughs> oh, God. Oh. So for the legs, I have some of these spare IKEA table legs. So I've had these for years and now's a good time to use them. So they're not quite long enough, so I do need to add a little bit of height to them. So that's easy enough to do. So I'm just going to cut out um, a round circle here for the base of the leg to sit on and then add in some blocking underneath. And that will give me the right height that I need. And then this is always adjustable as well. So um, that's the plan for these legs. So after cutting out some circles on the bandsaw, I cleaned them up using a template bit on the router. Then attach them to the leg extenders that I cut off camera with a couple of screws. From there it's just a simple matter of attaching a few screws to these existing legs. Again, nothing complicated here, we want to keep this build as simple as possible. After testing that the legs are going to work, I unscrew them again from the base and attach it to the main frame. We only need two legs since one side is going to screw into the table saw and the other obviously supported by these two legs. So after attaching both legs, I'm going to focus on bolting this to the table and getting this coplanar with the top of the table saw. Well, sometimes even I get the math wrong. So I thought I'd cut these high enough or low enough uh, to compensate for giving myself some adjustability. And I thought I had, but it turns out after I've bolted this in, we're obviously nowhere near plane here and I've got no adjustability left. So these are simply too long. I can't remember what I've done. I think probably I haven't allowed for enough um, gap here or um, offset for this particular piece. So no big deal. I just have to take these legs off and I need to uh, shorten this post by probably an inch or so. So that'll be fine. Off camera, I cut about 20 millimeters off each of the blocks on the legs and then reattach them and try this again. Using a straight edge, I made small adjustments to the leg post till it was even with the tabletop. Once all adjusted and all of the bolts tightened and fixed, the attachment is incredibly sturdy and will be more than sufficient to support our rails. So let's talk about linear rails now. So these linear rails are courtesy of Vivo. So thank you very much to Vivo for supplying those and supporting uh, the channel and video. Um, and they are effectively stainless steel rods with a support and they have these guide blocks which have ball bearings along them. So what they allow is for the guide to slide along the rail and the idea will be, imagine this is our sled we'll call it, these will slide 
back and forth and that's what's going to give us our panel motion. I've got four. I've bought a couple extra um, just to make sure that we've got enough uh, guide rails. Um, but now what we need to do is we need to think about how we're going to um, attach these. So we need to make sure that these rails are parallel, not to the blade, not to the fence, but actually to the uh, minor slot. So no different to if you were trying to adjust your fence or you were trying to adjust your uh, table saw blade alignment, you need to be doing it to the um, miter slot. So I've got an idea of how to do it. In fact, actually it's not my idea, sorry. It's from Make Something, the way that he did it. So I'm gonna borrow his inspiration on how to align these. Um, but that's the next step to align and to attach the linear rails. The way I'm going to achieve this is pretty low tech. Using an old miter slot guide from a previous miter gauge, I'll attach a length of ply to one side and the guide block to the other. By screwing in one end of the linear rail, this will allow it to pivot. As I work up the rail sliding the guide along, this should in theory pull the rail in alignment with the miter slot. I repeated this for both sides and in theory this should make each rail perfectly parallel to the miter slot on the table saw. With the linear guides now in place, we can turn our attention to the actual sliding panel. This is going to fit just inside the sides and on top of the guide blocks, and of course will once again be made out of form ply. The panel is going to have some T-track mounted down the length of it. This is to fit a miter gauge that I'm going to use to mount my final miter fence to. To cut out this groove, I'm just going to do this on my table saw using a dado stack. My dado stack isn't wide enough to do the cut in one pass, so I'll creep up on the fit using a test piece before making the final cut on the panel. The T-track is a little too long here, so I'll trim it on the miter saw. Cutting aluminium using normal saw blades is perfectly fine and isn't going to hurt them. Just be sure to take it slow. Is there anything better in woodworking than a super satisfying fit? Then it's a simple matter of screwing the T-Track to the sled. Because we took out a significant amount of material to allow for the T-Track, I also added some support underneath to ensure it remains rigid and to give something for the screws to attach to. To align the holes for the guide blocks, I cut out this template on the laser, which should allow me to align the drill holes in the right spot to accept the M6 bolts. Then we can carefully drill the holes out on the drill press. The laser guide on the Bosch drill press really is one of the best features any drill press can have and makes achieving accuracy really easy. And lastly I'll attach the guide blocks to the sled. Well, moment of truth, so first attempt at putting the sled on. Hopefully, I've got my calculations right. It was at this point I realised that this was not working. Very, 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 very tight. 
It was at this point I started fiddling with the panel, trying different things to get it to work right, and not doing what I really should have done, which is spend a moment to analyse what the problem was, and to tackle the problem properly. I took it apart a few times, adjusted rails, removed screws, removed shims, but it all resulted in the same thing, it just didn't seem to work. It was at this point I was getting really frustrated, so I decided to put the tools down, walk away, and I spent the next few days thinking about the solution and approaching it in the right way. Well guys, it's a few days later actually. I was really struggling to align this tabletop to shim it up properly to get it even with the tabletop. And sometimes when you start to get frustrated with a project and you start to force it to do things, um, the best thing to do is sometimes just walk away, take a break, you know, uh, reassess, rethink, and come up with a different plan and approach it when you're in a bit of a better mental state because I was starting to get really frustrated with this and yeah, I was trying to force it to do things it just shouldn't do. So um, a few days later, I come back and um, I did a few things to make this a lot easier on myself. So originally I was shimming the individual guide blocks with a shim and then trying to, you know, get them all even with individual shims, which was just taking ages. And every time I'd shim one up a little bit more, it would really throw the linear guide blocks out of alignment with the tabletop. So um, I ditched that idea and went with something my dad just simply said. And I should have listened to him at the very side. He just said, why don't you just shim the rails and that's exactly what I've done. I grabbed some playing cards, um, shimmed up the uh, linear rails here, brought it up off the surface. Um, these are just temporary till I uh, make some proper shims to go in there. But to be really honest with you, I mean, it will work. I could leave these in here indefinitely, but I will eventually shim those properly. But as a result, these are finally uh, running properly or the, these bearings are running properly. So now it's really seamless, quite smooth, and um, runs really well. So you'll notice that there's obviously six guide blocks. The rail obviously stops here. It means that these guide blocks come off the rails, and it means that you have to get the alignment right because you want those guide blocks to reattach to the rails without causing any major jarring or issues with those. So I think we've got that now. So. These re-engage really nicely back onto the guide rails and as a result it means that we don't have these rails sticking all the way out impeding how you're going to use the table saw which is what I didn't want to have. So these go quite a long way back here. So as you see, you know, we've got our temporary miter saw. So that's what we're going to use to uh, make miter saw gauge I should say. This is what we're going to use to make our fence that will stretch across here. These all stop here, so this is the second lot of guide blocks, so we don't want this to come off, otherwise there's only one set on there. I'll attach a stopper in here at some stage, um, you will see. But once it passes the saw blade, and obviously it's cut the material, I've just left the rails much longer. So, yes, that's where we're at. Off camera I made a few blocks with some scrap pine and attached some EVA foam to each to act as a buffer. This will stop the sled from going too far off the rail. The next step is to make the fence, and to do that I'm going to join strips of form ply together. First I cut them to height on the table saw.
I'll then need to take off one side of resin from each board as glue will not stick to form ply and this is simple enough to achieve through the planer. To make sure the fence is nice and flat, I'll glue them together and use my workbench as a reference surface. After the glue dried, I squared the edge on my jointer. It's generally fine to run plywood through a jointer, you just have to make sure you take light passes. The fence is also going to have some T-Track embedded in it to allow for some stock blocks or extra clamps. I'll groove that out over at the table saw again using my dado stack. By gluing the fence against a flat surface and adding the aluminium T-Track, the end result is a perfectly flat fence. To soften the edges I add a tiny chamfer to the bottom and then cut the fence to final length. The overall length of the fence is 800mm long. To fix the fence to the mitre gauge, I'm going to install some threaded inserts and then use these star knobs to secure it together. This should allow, at least in theory, to be able to take the fence on and off very quickly. So those of you who were paying close attention to the start of the video where I was showing this will notice that this is not the mitre gauge that I started with and it's not the fence that I just made and there's some good reasons why I have now changed my mind and switched all of that out. I designed and built this whole system originally around this particular mitre gauge and this is the mitre gauge that came with my table saw and that should have been my first indication that that might not have been a good idea. The problem that I discovered with this particular mitre gauge, uh, well there's two problems that I discovered. One is, is that there is too much slop in the track and it only has one adjustment bolt here, one adjustment bolt here and none between here and all the way down here. So while you can get a relatively tight fit up here, you still have all of this play in the end of the mitre gauge. The second problem that I have here is that there is a little tiny bit of play going this way. You can probably hardly tell that this is moving at all as I move it here. The issue though is that once you attach a very long fence and it's all the way out here, then even the tiniest of movement here, half a degree, correlates to maybe three or four times that and the error that you then introduce is quite significant. So unfortunately it meant I can't use this mitre gauge, it's completely useless and in fact I should have really checked this in detail before uh, I designed around this. So the lesson that I would have for anyone attempting this and wanting to use a mitre gauge as well is don't use a cheap one, go ahead and make sure you get a good one that you have full adjustment over. The third problem, specifically the fence, is not that there's something wrong with the fence, that it has, isn't straight anymore or isn't flat or anything like that. The problem here is that it's actually really heavy. It's heavier than I anticipated it would be. And because you're going to have quite a lot of fence overhanging the saw, then you want something relatively light and obviously still straight. 
So the problem with this one is that it really wanted to pull down in this direction on the sled. So I made the decision to spend some money and buy a piece of aluminum fence or aluminum fence uh, for this and replace the miter gauge with my Torcada one. So this is a much better fence. It has full adjustability and more importantly, it is not going anywhere. It is actually nice and snug in the minor slot there. Now I did make a little bracket here and this is purely just to help with some of the weight distribution to keep it from tilting too much this way. So that's something that I cut out on the laser. But other than that, that's the reason why I have ditched the fence here and that miter gauge. Now, don't get me wrong, this fence is completely fine and I will reuse it. I'm thinking about reusing it either on my bandsaw or finally doing something with my drill press over there to put a better fence system on it. So I will reuse this. It will not go to waste. And if you are making this and you wanted to have a permanent fence solution, you're going to physically bolt it to the uh, plate here. Um, then go for it. This would be perfectly fine. But because this is something I want to be able to take on and off um, and be more temporary, then I've opted to swap it for aluminium and that's what I would recommend to anyone else considering doing the same thing. So there you have it folks, the ultimate table saw accessory for a fraction of the cost. If you're interested in building your very own sliding miter sled for your table saw, then I'll be linking to all the products that I used in this build in the description below. Once again, I want to thank Vivo for providing product for this build and to my channel members, your support means a great deal. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.